I'll now recognize the Honourable Member for Calgary Mountain View. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Pleasure to rise and speak to the throne speech. A truly historic time in our province, and I'm also proud to be part of this uh, important time in Alberta and, and a, a fresh new possibility for Alberta that hopefully will leave a legacy that we can all in this House be very proud of. I want to thank the people of Calgary Mountain View, first of all, who elected me for the fourth time in spite of all my failings. I remember uh, in the 2012 election, the, a young New Democrat uh, opponent in the campaign said to the people in our debate, friends, are you going to vote for this man when he's been here for eight years and hasn't changed the government yet? <laughs> I apologized for not achieving a change of government in eight years, but we've now done it. And I'm very proud of it. With, with all due respect to many of the colleagues uh, in the former government, uh, it was time for change, and Albertans were very clear about that, and I think we will all be better for it. I want to be a little bit historic here. I'm in my 66th year. I've worked uh, from South Africa in my early years in medical practice to uh, uh, the Canadian North, uh, Inuit, uh, Métis communities for six months. I've worked in the Philippines for a year and a half with my young family. Um, and. Uh, in Asia for, for, for another brief period. And, and what that really opened my eyes to was the profound impact of public policy, the profound impact of good politics and bad politics. For good or ill, politicians create the conditions for health and they create the conditions for waste, disease, turmoil, and collapse. We have a, a really important role that is hard to measure, and many of us uh, have avoided politics for some of that reason. We, we realize how profound it is, or we believe it has no significance to our lives. And many of the young people, including my own children, fail to see what relevance politicians have to their lives. So there's this interesting dichotomy of profound impact on the one hand, a perception of profound impact, and a and a sense of trepidation to get into it. On the other, a real sense that it's, it's, it's a waste of time, it's games, it's, it's quotes, politics. Uh, well, politics has a bad rap because for me, politics is negotiating the public interest in the long term. Uh, there are many different definitions of politics, but for me, whenever I talk to groups about the meaning of politics, we are negotiating here, folks. Everyone has an interest, everyone has a, a vision, everyone has a desired route to get there. So we are here to negotiate the common interest for the long term. And I think if we keep that in our forefront, we will make good decisions and we will be proud when we leave this place, whether we're carried out or whether we're kicked out or whether we leave voluntarily. We will be proud of what we've done here. And I guess I want to emphasize just how critical these times are in our world. The, the turmoil in the Middle East, the um, the crisis we're facing economically with the oil prices and the job losses and, and those sorts of issues, the um, growing concerns about climate and, and the, the growing numbers of extreme weather events and, and people, uh, refugees migrating out of their countries in desperate attempts to find a home and a, and a secure place to raise their families. Uh, poverty, uh, widespread poverty, you know, uh, something like 20% of the planet, 2 billion people live without fresh water and with the, on a dollar a day sort of thing. We have a huge responsibility to work together here as, as well as we can and not let partisanship undermine good, good decisions in the public interest. We have a real opportunity to set aside some of that, think about our children, our grandchildren, our, our province, the province we love so dearly and want others to come to and have opportunities for, uh, we cannot squander this opportunity, particularly now when there's so much at stake on the planet. Uh, everyone, I think, 
realizes how blessed we are in Alberta. Most Canadians realize the great potential of Alberta and of the rest of the country. Uh, but I think many of us have been frustrated by the partisanship that has in some ways undermined our best efforts as a, as a team of people that are really looking for the best that we can bring forward for our future. So really listening, respecting each other, genuinely looking for solutions, not being right, but being honest, uh, finding the truth as opposed to winning and losing. Um, I really look forward to that possibility. Um, and many of us felt that the past government had lost a sense of that. Uh, and they, they, they projected a sense that they had the answers, that they, they weren't prepared to really listen to changes because things were going pretty nicely the way they were. And they were benefiting from the way they were. And so why wasn't everybody happy with the way they were? Well, we didn't have a fair tax regime. We weren't addressing the growing poverty and inequality in our society. We just weren't. Access problems to education were growing and health care. Um, we weren't shifting to a preventive community focus in, in so much of that, that would be tremendous financial savings. Human suffering would be reduced. And then we weren't serious about climate change, the biggest crisis to hit our generation. So uh, we needed change. Uh, and uh, notwithstanding the fact that Albertans uh, tried to give them a second, a third, and a fourth chance, any government at 44 years is past its best before date. I dare say even a Liberal government should be changed at 44 years. And I even said to people uh, in, in my campaign, every century, you know, you should try a Liberal government. <laughs> conscious Albertans are aware, conscious Albertans are really aware of our domestic and international threats. They really are hoping we will put our minds and hearts together and come forward with really thoughtful, wise, longer thinking policies than just this next few years. So when the New Democrats say to me, we need time to put a budget together, I say, take your time, do it right. I don't want a fast budget, I want the right budget. But do your homework. Use the best evidence. Call in good experts. And I don't mean Jack Mintz. <laughs> There's a guy that gets hundreds of thousands of dollars from Imperial Oil and runs the Calgary School of Public Policy. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I've told, I've told Jack that. I think he has to temper his comments in support of the oil industry. Am I getting off track? <laughs> this piece, there is no off track. We are, <laughs> We are now, hopefully, in a transi transient economic downturn. But make no mistake, the growing evidence suggests that our way of living, our way of working, our way of planning is failing. On a global level, we are failing the future. We have to do better. We have to start thinking differently and working differently together. The war on carbon grows across the planet, and we must actively plan for a different future before we're forced to in Alberta, before we have to tell the oil companies, sorry to see you go, are you not going to clean up the mess? We've got to start planning now and put in place a conservation plan, a new technology plan, and really move forward so that when they do finally have to move on, we have a strong economy and a strong energy future. Our most pressing need, though, is to learn to live and work together respectfully, with genuine appreciation, as if our lives depended on it. They do. Our lives depend on finding some new ways forward together, ways that we don't necessarily know and haven't experienced fully yet in our homes, in our communities, in this legislature. We may have to find some new ways to meet and talk, eat together, talk together, sort out our differences, and get on with what really is needed by Albertans. Various populations around the world taught me we must include the planet, because whether or not we're ready, they're coming to us. And we cannot turn them away forever. And we have to have resilient, broad thinking, 
creative ways of including them in our culture that really support them to the point where they can actually be successful and contribute to our society. And many today, I know them in Calgary, are very frustrated. They get six months funding and suddenly they're expected to function fully and they cannot and, and they need more support than, than that. So that's one of the areas that I want to see improved is how we treat newcomers and engage and, and help them transition, integrate into our society. More than ever, we legislators, legislators have to work together for long-term well-being. One hopes that our sophisticated public will not tolerate opposition for pure political advantage and will appreciate and vote for genuine cross-party meetings, consultations, knowledge sharing. Some of my, my Wild Rose colleagues have tremendous things to teach me about small business and, and economic opportunity. My New Democrat colleagues across the way will teach me about how we can be more inclusive in our communities and support longer uh, uh, thinking and planning around our human potential. We have seen positive steps on this already, and, and I congratulate the government uh, on some of those steps that we've all talked about. Uh, for example, the mental health system, which I'm very privileged to be part of helping to hopefully shape and move forward. Moving from opinion to facts, and values is part of what I think our challenge is. We've operated a lot on opinion here in this House. We've operated a lot on um, ideology. We've operated a lot in some cases on political opportunity. We have not been focused on evidence, science, facts, and values. Let's make sure we include all of those. Facts, science, and values have to be part of good public policy. I know many people would, can say that, but at the end of the day, we have to acknowledge that some of our policies might not look as good for our party, but it will be better for the long term. We have to start biting the bullet, and that's what our job is over here. Hold you accountable when you think you're going to get away with something uh, just because it may serve your short-term public uh, political interests. Parties must show willingness to engage in the difficult questions of where the market, with limited foresight and no conscience, and where short-term profit fits into the larger issues of saving our future and ensuring environmental limits are respected in development decisions. Small business does have needs, and, and I know that. And I caution the New Democrats on how fast they're moving forward on the, on the small business tax. I, too, have heard from a number of people in my community, especially the Chinese restaurant down the street who says they will lay off two of their people right away if, uh, if it jumped to 15. Now, it's not going to 15 right away, but it's, it's a significant increase for them. And they're just scraping by in this Chinese restaurant. So I don't know how you're going to measure that, but we think you should go slowly and measure impacts as you go and decide in the next two years whether to go the full extent to where you're going. I don't mind a government that changes its mind. If it's got evidence and it comes to us and says we've just changed our mind because we see impacts here and there and they're not what we thought, I respect a government that does that. Don't feel you have to follow through just because you have said so without full evidence. All of us create platforms without full evidence. That's why we call in scientists and, and, and experts. Our First Nations have to be included in any of our planning, and I certainly will be including them if I get a choice in this mental health review. Uh, they are the fastest growing population here. And they have to be meaningfully engaged. They cannot be tokens. They are tired of this so-called consultation where they come to the table, are told the facts, and then uh, asked to agree or disagree, and, and then have to end up in court to actually get any resolution because they haven't really felt listened to. They have many challenges that we will never, never, never understand or, or under, uh, appreciate fully. Uh, the latter, as I mentioned, are the fastest growing population and they continue to be at serious and increasing risk of illness, violence and premature death. A tremendous opportunity for both greater contributions to our society if we help them to make it and a tremendous opportunity for crisis and cost and chaos if we don't do a better job integrating them into our culture. It's equally clear that jobs and the new economic opportunities are there and the government can provide some incentives without picking winners and losers. 
You have an opportunity to help small businesses to move from the experiment to the business, uh, full business uh, opportunity uh, and, and stop the breakdown between that chain. And I've met some people who are really helpful in that. So thank you for the opportunity to say a few things. I have much more to say, but another.